So guys, welcome to uh, the workshop today. <laughs> Alex or Axel? Hey Axel? guys, I'm, I got disconnect, so I'm back. Yay! Are you, can you hear us now? Yeah, I can hear you. Amazing! Right. So right. I was going to ask you, um, in your in your slideshow, do you also have um, uh, an introduction about yourself? Yeah, I did, I did. Amazing, Maybe okay. A short, a short one. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But I mean, uh, if you want, also you can um, you can tell us a bit about yourself and uh, like you know where you come from in the NFT space and um, how you got to where you are. Um, yeah, yeah. So if you want to go through all that and introduce yourself because it's better to yeah. hear from you than it is from me. So yeah. take it away, Axel. Welcome, welcome. Hi guys, I'm Axel Lim. So I'm a multidiscipline designer that turned into flipper so so i'm like i'm graphic designer and also ui ux designer and motion designer so how how do i find out about nft so i found out like uh last year last year around around march so i saw like a lot of beeper news like around march then i i i did some study at that time i at that time i also found out about uh at that time, I also explore like cryptocurrency. Just now, I got just nice. I got some Ethereum in my wallet. So, so I didn't waste any time, and I straight go to that time the hottest platform NFT platform uh, foundation, and I didn't waste any time. I straight upload my first first work, and I sold sold it for sixty point sixty nine ETH. I know it's a nice number, so. We we will talk about this next time. So it's stacking luck in foundation. So we with this amount of money, I I able to snowball the amount. So snowball is like it's a concept in game. It's like you got the advantage and you keep uh you keep you keep uh taking the advantage, make the advantage more uh more more bigger. I think you all get the drift. So so before before snowballing, I didn't have that thought to like buy NFT project. So I only had that thought when that time around April, I think ETH fell to like 1.6k, like damn a lot. So I a bit panicked and I scrolled through Twitter and I found a tweet from Beeper. So Beeper post this and and I like what 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 the fuck is this? Then I I straight uh do some study, and I and I discover this this beautiful world, NFT collectible. Then I start to buy my first NFT. Uh, my first NFT is a uh, bought it. So actually, I've been trading like bought it for a while. So I trade like since bought it uh like two point three ETH. So uh very huge advantage over there. But at that time I didn't buy a lot. I I only buy like one, so I could I could buy a lot, but I didn't. So with with that, with that uh, with the with the world I found, I start snowballing the amount of ETH I have. So I start looking for project, scouting for project, and I have fair share of uh win and lose. So actually, the green one is win, the red one is lose. Actually, I lose, uh, quite, quite like, maybe around thirty percent. You can say I am like a a very safe trader. I I do a lot of research before I buy into a project. So if we convert this into a a game terminology, KDA. So you can see I have like thirty one kills, eleven death, and four assist assist is draw so if we convert it into a percentage it's like 73 win rate so my current current win rate is 70 73 percent i i actually i will share this behind like how how you how you get this amount of win rate so but before we before we dive into the dive into the trading world uh it's best you prepare these three things so like you need to like allocate your ratio, your portfolio ratio, like how much you want to invest in NFT and how much you want to invest in cryptocurrency. 
always never never overextend like never spend 100 percent of your portfolio in one thing and you need to have spreadsheet also to keep track of what you buy uh like uh like like what what's the buying price you buy and yeah something like that and also if you if you want to mean mean collectible last time we are we always mean stuff but right now right now not much so a bit updated this one right now i think mostly from whitelist so so the guess what calculator is useful when it helps you to uh, estimate like how much room you can improve from if you buy from certain price i think you can do it from spreadsheet like uh, just need to do the maths everything so i'll share with share with you all the guidelines to pick pick the right project like free launch project like wh whatever i share next right uh, actually evolve over time so when wherever the market change it change so I'm not sure whether my my theory uh my guideline is still on on date it, it might already change. So you all take it, uh uh don't don't take it uh fully like just take it on a grain of salt. So actually I do a, like a stat chart. So it it depends on on certain trader like different trader have different criteria. So this is my criteria. I usually when before I buy a project. I will demand, I will check this six point, like demand check. So I will go through their Discord, Twitter, and see whether got people want or not. And I'll check their roadmap. Roadmap to see whether the roadmap is on trend. So before, I think before this is token nomic. Token, token nomic is one of the trend and uh companion. So it, it really changed time to time. And I'll check web, check their website see if their website got like enough information for the for the uh for the buyer to to get the information they want then the last i will hey, then i will check their their team see whether they are legit or not then i will check their follower and see whether their follower is real or not so but this day right a lot of uh, account they buy follower so you really need to like check to make sure you you didn't get uh get get baited. Then I'll check if the project can build hype. Like uh like how how they how they put their marketing stuff together. So so these are important as a trader. So when when you put all these together, they are actually a selling point. A selling point for for a trader to sell their stuff. So once you once you check all this. Uh, you're able to find out whether the project selling point is strong or not. So actually, I put together like uh, a case study. Like, so this okay. is the edition. Sorry. Hello. Let's go. Thank you. Let's go, man. Hello. You all want to ask anything? They just had their mute and uh, their their mic unmuted, but I unmuted them, server muted them. So okay, please continue. Okay. Sorry about that. No worry, no worry. So these are the additional criteria for post launch project. So if the project is launched, you need to add in this criteria. But but this criteria, right? This stage, right? Is depend on depend on you. Uh, what what criteria are you looking for in 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 that project? So this is my criteria. So you can add in like uh exposure. Uh like if you if you want to buy buy like po uh post loan project. So don't buy reality, you just buy like just buy floor, get exposure. And a lot of beginners they do something wrong is they they actually buy every project. They uh they buy quantity, but for me I buy quality. So use your judgment to pick pick the right project. Not not over uh not not like not you enter the more than the more high chance. So I actually did some case study like uh like recently my biggest win is Azuki. So before before you went so high, uh 
I, I actually did like based on my stats, I did some study whether they achieved those kind of points or not. So for Azuki, their marketing hype definitely is there. So they, they get one point there. I'm not sure whether you all seen this before, but it's quite nice. Then the next, I will check their demand. So I'll see on my committee whether people are talking about this project or not. So when when the second second check is on, is then you go go keep moving on the 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 stats. Then you check their website and roadmap, see whether they on trend or not. So when they when they hit almost 60%, 70% of what you what you're looking for in the project. Actually, you can quite safely buy already. Means that uh, means that uh, you are comfortable to hold this project. If you are if you are not comfortable, no point to buy also because you will you are done when it did. So when you do enough research, you can safely buy the, any buy the project. So also when also there is guideline to not pick the wrong project. So I actually make some uh fair fair share of lose also. I lose like around 30% plus. So the mostly when I when I did some mistake is because of this four point like FOMO, like whenever a project pump, whenever a project like uh like go up very high price, but you are not you are not part of the part of the pump, you will FOMO and look for a project that that uh they are not they are they are they are not very promising it will cloud your cloud your decision making and peer pressure so this is very dangerous when your friend asks you to buy something you tend to like tend to like uh tend to like uh ignore all the research you make and you you just follow it so trade alone if you need fake hype fake hype is like when you join their discord right uh, people will, you'll see like a lot of people talk about it like, but but mostly they are hired, they are hired by hired by the project owner to like show show about a project, so you need to like, uh, double and triple confirm whether they are real or not, and last one is influencer shoe. So these are the four four very dangerous thing that you need to, you need to uh uh look look up for when you when you want to buy a project so i recently i i think during during the last time i lose lose one very huge project so bravo bravo in in different that so actually when i buy right i get four more i get four more during the pump so one mistake i make is i buy on the peak then second is fake hype. So when I go through their Discord, like you see like it's very happening, but actually all of them are talking about the floor, floor price. There's there's a second red flag you need to take note. Third one is influencer shoe, like like your entire Twitter full of full of influencer talking about it. That's that's when you want to keep away from that project. But actually there are more points more points uh to be to to be in this corner but but uh i think these are the main main thing you need to look out for you can always adjust this list when you when you trade like different different trader got their different different thing they they look out for yeah so if you if you buy this project then you just you just have to enjoy the roller coaster right so this is the most important important thing like when to sell like if you if you manage to follow the previous previous guide like what if you buy you buy the winning project and losing project like when when do you need to sell a, a lot of people like they confuse on this part actually it's very situational like what what do you need like as a as a sell, buyer seller what what do you need do you need money or do you need like, do you do you have like e emotional attached on the NFT? So for emotional, actually, I really can't talk much about that because it's about individual. But for money, 
if you are going for money, then you need to set a target, like how much gain you want. Like when you buy something, that's why that's why you need a spreadsheet at the before you start all this, to like to like set a target, like how how much you want to sell, when you reach that target, fifty percent, seventy percent. When you reach, you sell, or you can sell at at the peak, at the peak, at the hype of the project. So, so when you, when, so these are the two things I'm looking for when I want to sell my winning project. But some people say that uh, you don't sell winning project, you only sell losing project to buy the winning project. So it's actually very situational, depends on the, the type of trader you, you are. For me, I'm looking for money, so I, I will always maximize my profit whenever there is good time. So. So what, what uh, when to sell a losing project? So same thing, you need to set a lose target, like uh, how much you're willing to lose. Like then you then you move on to like scan the community moral. You see whether the community are active or not. Uh, one of the good example is bot a yakka. So wherever the project deep, you you seldom see their community talk about flaw. They just like chill, just do their thing. Their moral is very high. So it's a, it's always safe to buy when you see this kind of situation. Then you check their roadmap, see whether they see whether they uh they got consistently uh execute their roadmap or not. If these three uh if these three points are not not very I uh not very good looking, then you can actually you can just dump it already. Not much to not much to attach your feeling on it. Yeah. So, and what do you do after you sell? So if you if you sell during peak, uh you you gain your benefit, you can always be grateful and you can buy fear, sell hype. Like if you believe in that project, you can always, always buy back when it did. Then you just keep repeat, wins and repeat uh, all the previous point. Yeah, but in in NFT, you in NFT you only you will you will never be happy. You will always regret, no matter you sell at peak or you sell at loss. That there will always be regret. So have to be grateful uh, wherever you sell. The conclusion is NFT space is growing very fast. So the rules change very quickly. So always do your own research and adapt to market change. And, and yeah, that's it. That's, that's the trading nutshell. <laughs> Thank and... you so much, Axel. Yeah. That was that was really <laughs> that was really informative. Um I have a question for you. Also, if anyone has any questions, feel free to either type it into the residence chat or you can um um you can just directly ask him here. Uh so you said there are different types of Tra like nft traders or flippers um yeah yeah can you just give us some examples of of uh the different types and which type you are for me i'm i'm like safe trader there are there are some aggressive trader like when they found out about that project they will double in like they will they will they will buy it very aggressively then they are they are actually they're actually more like Uh, not sure how to explain this, but they are influencer trader. Like they use their follower to to trade stuff. And yeah, I think I think they are actually more. But right now, what I can think of is this one. Yeah. Cool. So is that kind of like um? So they, they put more at risk, right? It's like they're more of a risky trader. Yeah, yeah. 
and there's a higher chance of losing a lot more if you pick the wrong project. Yeah, but actually they are the combination of safe trader, but they are they are the double in double in kind. Like when they, they when they feel like cool cat is safe, but for a safe trader they will buy one. But for a risk trader they they maybe will buy like buy like two three they will double in uh, they will double in more. Uh, something like that. Mm -hmm. Um there's a question from GLT. Um they said how do you decide whether to DCA into projects you bought that dipped or if it's time to cut loss? What does DCA mean? Yeah, I was about to ask. <laughs> <laughs> double down. Double or dollar cost average. Uh, what do you mean by dollar cost average into projects? Oh, buy at a cheaper cost? Yeah. I think he meant that, uh, like, what what's the price you need to buy in during the dip, right? Is that what you say? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. So, for example, like you said, um, buy the fear and sell the hype. And yeah. so I guess it's more like, you know, when do you know it's time to cut your loss or do you just keep buying at the dip because maybe for, it's just going to keep dipping, yeah. you know? I, I think for, that's what the Yeah. For the buy, buy fear and sell hype, but actually that one is depends on the community you are in. So like bought it, if you, if you know, if you've been in the community long, you'll know the support range, like how much it will dip. It, it, maybe it will dip until 72 E. So when when you when you roughly know the range, then you know what price to buy in, and so so you need to like, I call it aga aga So you need to know like when to when when you know seventy two if is a is a the lowest. Then then you then you know how to make your decision from there. But that's based on um established projects right like you know blue chip projects yeah. um but if you Actually, were talking not not really like for blue chip project you apply for all project but but you need to be in that community long enough like one two day actually is very hard to judge like what's the project uh what's the project uh lowest low what's the project highest high yeah yeah mm. because i guess like if if you were to look at Board Ape Yacht Club, it would be easier to kind of tell like when their lowest low, not lowest low, but like kind of that range. But say, for example, um, like new projects that come out and they're, um, like you said, the like say the indifferent ducks, right? So they're on the pump and then they start dipping and then they kind of pump a little bit, but then they start dipping more. So for for those things, then... I guess, like you said, you just have to do your own research, right? Whether yeah. you want to stay in the project or not. It actually pump and dip on the same day. So like very fast. So if you want to be like, if you want to be safe, you actually need to wait like for one week, one week, like two weeks, then you see, then you only make your move. If you, if you like me, I made a mistake that when I buy on day one, I see the pump, I, I thought I would, I would miss out all the opportunity. Then I straight, mm. then I straight make the move without without doing all the research and everything. Yeah. Yeah, I I think I feel you on that one too. Cause then you never know what your your mind is telling you during the FOMO period is like, oh, but if I wait a week, it's going to go up even higher, and I'm going to miss this opportunity right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gotta emotionally detach yourself. You know, just just. Well, I mean, it could happen, right? You just never know. One week is a very long time in the NFT yeah. space. When you when you see all your friend project, right? When you see all your friend portfolio on Palm, right? You will you will become FOMO. You have that feeling like, hey, how come my project project haven't Palm yet? Then you will like make all these silly silly mistake. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, like you said, you know, sometimes you just need to, although. Yeah, I guess, I guess, like, again, 
uh, once you've done your research and if the project hasn't pumped yet, but you really believe in the project, then yeah, then, then you just can. hold, right? Yeah. Or then no, one you thing is, uh, Kumo, one thing I have experienced is that many people are living in opium that one day this thing will go up and I will just get rid of it. So there must be a difference when when you say that you believe in the project and the team and you're and sometimes you just are holding the bag. And I've seen that most of the times when you're holding a bag and it goes to zero at the end. Have you oh, so what are your thoughts on that? That's why that's why earlier I uh I said that when to sign a losing project is you need to you need to set like uh like what what do you want? Like do you want money or do you want do do you just believe in the team? If you want money then you have to detach everything. When, when, if you want money, then you need to set a percentage, a losing percentage of how much you're willing to lose. So if you if you believe in the team and you you like the project, then you it's very hard. Actually, it's very hard to to combine the money and the team together. So for me, money is money. When when I start losing money, I sell. I wish I I was I was smart like that. I'm like, no, it's going to go up again. <laughs> I wish I was as blunt as that for real. So okay. Axel, I wanted to ask a question. So yesterday I was, for example, I was doing uh, my research on reading the white papers on the new Kaiju game that is coming. I'm not talking about exactly Kaiju project, but whenever I do a research, I am not 100% convicted that should I buy or not. And I certainly took a shot at buying yesterday, but like, what are your thoughts whenever, like it, it will never happen that I'm 100% convicted, right? So what do you do at that? Like, how do you decide whether to buy it or not? Yeah, for, for that, actually, like I mentioned earlier, like all this, all this gimmick stuff, all the roadmap, white paper, is actually a tool for the reseller to use. So when you, it's like a selling point, it's like, uh, so, so when you, when you read those things, the white paper, do you think then you need to make a judgment whether it appeals to the public or not? Like whether the public, when, when they read the roadmap, whether they will, they will like it or not, when they read the white paper, is it too, too difficult to understand? So if, oh. if yeah, so if, if, it's too difficult to understand then uh then you need to think of when you make decision yeah mm -hmm. i hope i hope that answer your question yeah but but the thing is that whenever i read about these projects which are which are play to earn they always come up with some difficult as uh mechanics yeah. to generate coins or something so yeah, I think yeah. it's difficult for everyone in the space to, like most of the people in the space to understand. So yeah. uh, do you think that this is, like this can happen? I'm not sure, but yeah, it's difficult for all of us, I guess. Yeah, so, when, when it's difficult, then, then yeah. it's, it's kind of hard. Uh. It's kind of hard. When it's kind of hard for normal people to understand, and uh -huh. it's very hard for a reseller to explain explain uh explain uh to like promote the project yeah so but we we as a reseller we need to believe in the project first before we we need to convince other to believe in if we own self doesn't believe in the project then it's hard hard for us to resell also so you need to convince yourself to to love the project first yeah He'd be like, please, brain, just love this project so I can be at peace. <laughs> um, we have a we have also a question from uh Wixie. Um, they said, with so many projects already in the market, what to look for in an existing undervalued project during dips? Actually, right now, right now, right now is bear market, so it's a risk 
risk to buy a project also right now. But if you if you insist to buy a existing undervalued project, I would say through through word of mouth, like through your friend. If your friend say it's good, then you then you can do some extra research on it. Then then you do the previous point like I mentioned, like you check the community, check the founder, check check autos. But but the first thing it has to come from your friend, like like whether whether got people believe or not in this project. If no one talk about, no one talk about means no demand. No demand, don't buy. As a reseller, you need to have a demand on certain project. If no demand, then don't buy. Yeah, that that's my thought lah. But some other trader might might take uh might think it differently. Hope that answer your question. Very interesting. Yeah. So, do you think like during the bear market, the so called the, the your usual traders should start looking into like, uh, or it would be better to kind of look at projects that are already established and be in for the long, like the the long term. Like it would be more like a hodl project that you're buying into now as opposed to a quick flip. Right now, right now, I think uh, blue chip uh. Are doing better than better than a new project. So if you if you able to invest in more established project, then right now right now would be the best time uh, Instead of buying like instead of buying like a new project new project that you're not sure about, it's best to buy more established project. Yeah. Uh. Hope that answer your question. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm just looking at. Uh oh, so HY asks, can you provide any tips on the trends of in NFT now? Feels like we are moving away from PFP, which I'm very emotionally attached to, and towards tokens and staking and play to earn. I think right now, I I've been stopped. I stopped trading for a while already, so I'm not sure uh, right now what's the market. But I think we are still we are still on PFP, but like you say, we are slowly moving away. So I think we we are we are we not sure what next. But I think but I think PFT PFT trend is almost almost uh almost gone. But I couldn't I couldn't answer your question like what what trends coming next. Uh as a trader, I also consistently like observe what people looking for. Uh what what are people uh what what are the trends? So I can't really really give you answer on that question. I guess you could say that um People are now kind of looking for more utilities. If if I if that's anything that I I've noticed, uh, but like you said, can't say that it's the next trend. But definitely people. I think there was a talk. Well, I think there was a talk earlier on Twitter Spaces with uh with Tacoa and Anonymi Anonymize. Yeah, yeah. And we, I'm not sure if you were there for that, but yeah, they were talking about you know the art part of the like you know just purely art based projects are now starting to um i wouldn't say die off but there's more expectations um to them say so if you make a, a so-called art project people will kind of be expecting utility as opposed to this is just an art project it's like so what other things you provide apart from just a, a pfp mm. so not saying that they're completely dying out but it's almost like the expectation is kind of shifting towards uh utility yeah, yeah. They expect more stuff. But yeah. but I think I think that actually profile pick has been promising utility for a while. Uh. So so I think people we we are look waiting for what, what next? Like what the next big thing. So everyone everyone is like waiting for like the blue chip, see what they what they're going to give to us. Yeah. Yeah. We'll just have to sit and wait. I mean, we're still in the in the early, very early stages of like you know of the space. 
Um, so there's def. I know it feels like forever, but it probably is like mentally forever since we since we first started. Yeah, yeah. But still considered was- early, yeah. Still considered a baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, someone said here. Um, is it? Hold on. Uh, oh, GLT made a comment and just said that as as of the moment, all play to earn games or projects have a Ponzi scheme. He has, or he or she has yet to see a sustainable play to earn game or project. Actually, um, if you are a trader, right, you don't have to believe in the token or the game. You just need a selling point. Like if the good. if the trend are tokenomic, then if the project has it, then and people looking for it, then you can sell sell the project. So wh- whether they are whether they are whether they make it or not does doesn't uh you actually you don't don't need to have much concern on it. You just need the selling point. If the project has has like nothing on it, like just an art project, then if there's a demand, then you you can go for it. If no demand for art project, then you just need to look for what people are looking for. Yeah. yeah, like don't you think that these days there is, like the so-called utilities are pretty much like a copy and pasta of many projects. Yeah, like right. almost like almost every project is doing tokenomics now. Almost every project has some sort of a game. Almost every project has some sort of a token thing involved. Um and um like yeah, I mean I guess if you're looking for a, a new long term project, there must be something that stands out that other projects haven't done before. Um so yeah, just just a thought to share, but <laughs> <laughs> Um, let's see. Uh, GLT says it might be best to buy undervalued projects that have an upcoming announcement in the short term that you feel would have hype and sell into that hype when the announcement or catalyst comes up. But but you need to be careful also. This day, uh, this day a lot of project like they're just going to like come in and like do a fake hype. Then they're just going to grab. So you you really like need to be careful. Yeah, because I noticed that a lot of projects are like, oh, so we're talking with you know we can't say who, but we're talking with so and so, and it's going to be like it's it's a well known brand, and uh, it's like you know they're they're hyping their project with no solid proof of anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and then people like oh you know it and then they start spreading rumors saying it could be this it could be with this project oh it could also be with this project and so they're buying into this like you said false hype uh, yeah. and then it's just like oh yeah it fell through it didn't like you know we the 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 meeting or whatever the the brand that we're working with uh, decided not to work with us yeah and then you're like okay well I bought into the hype now I sell and then there's like a dump. Yeah, so uh-huh. yeah, really need to do like a lot of research on the team. As mm-hmm. a maybe maybe it's more beneficial when uh for artists. As an artist you you are more easy to judge. Judge uh whether whether the whether the art is sincere or not. So yeah. You think? Yeah, that's that's my that's what I think. What so you mean maybe by the maybe, maybe for for like a normie, like a people without like a art background will be will be slightly difficult. That's why that's why right now people still buy like low effort low effort NFT. Oh yeah. <laughs> cause they cause they couldn't like really really pinpoint and judge, uh, judge the project like whether the artwork is good, or whether whether the artwork is not good, so. For Nomi, a bit difficult, but 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 you will you will learn uh, You will learn from the trend. You you will know what people are looking for. Then you just you just adjust to your taste, and you just see what people like. Then you just you just do study on that specific project. Yeah. 
Yeah. What are your thoughts on derivative projects? <laughs> Sorry? What are your thoughts on derivative projects? Deri de derivative project? Yeah. For me, actually, I buy like, I actually buy derivative project because uh, actually, I'm not sure why, but a lot of people <laughs> like to buy it. So that, there's demand for that. So when I see see it, like do this derivative, then I just buy it because I saw there's demand in it. But I, but I, but I didn't do much research. <laughs> just because, because people like it, I will buy it because there's demand. There's demand, then I, I can safely say that I will be able to sell sell that sell that project. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the only exception when you don't do your 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 those those that research that the chart that you did showed us earlier? Yeah. Um I think hold on, there's another uh oh, bubble butt said do you have any other strategies or timings in terms of selling projects? For instance, shall we be selling pre-reveal or post-reveal? Again, again. Um, uh, Bubblebutt says, or asked the question, says, do you have any other strategies or timings in terms of selling projects? Mm -hmm. For instance, should they sell before the reveal or after the reveal? Actually, this this point is very interesting. Actually, it's like situational. It depends on depends on what project you want to go next, and and how to say ah. Uh, actually, actually, this point is very situational. Uh huh. I actually doing a few projects. Right? Actually, I did differently. Sometimes. Sometimes I I sell it on pre-review. Sometimes I sell it on post-review. Oh, okay. So if you want to sell it on post-review, you need to need to see your financial status. Are Are you okay to like uh lose this amount of money? Cause during the post-review, right, you will maybe you'll get like uh get like common 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 PFP. Maybe you'll get like uh get like not rare one. Uh. So it's a risk there. Are, are you so you need to ask yourself whether you're willing to risk risk that risk that uh risk that chance. If you if you're willing to risk then then you can just sell it on post review uh, means you are means you have like extra money to to take the risk. So if you if you can take the risk, you you might have chances to get rare stuff. So when you, like like people always say, high risk, high return, something like that. So if you can't take a risk, then just sell it on pre review, like yeah, something like that. Yeah, like at the end of the day, if yeah. it's profit, profit is still profit, right? It's just yeah. a matter of how much profit you're going to take. Yeah, like recent one, recent one is Azuki. So when I when I mean Azuki, right, I mean five. During that time, I really, uh, my financial actually is quite stable. So I don't mind if I if I lose this extra five ETH. So I just hold and wait until post review to try my luck uh, to see whether I will get like extra rare stuff. Did you? Um, yeah, I hold. I hold it. And I sell. I think I sell it already. <laughs> I think TikTok. I made I made like fifty forty six ETH like that. What? So actually, you are you are my. I think you are already searching for my OpenSea account. Actually, I got like Wow account and and my uh and my Hot Wallet account, Hot Wallet and Cold Wallet account. So you mm. can't really find all the records. Yeah, <laughs> they're already stalking you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see, there was another question that someone had asked, and they said, do you think the NFT is a bubble? NFT is a bubble? Hmm, like, do you think it's going to pop, and then everyone's just going to be like, not talk about NFTs anymore after a while? I think it, NFT is here to stay, 
just mm. that it, it will evolve but we don't know what it will evolve yet like we we waiting for the big brother like bought it see what what they invent then then we'll see how how the smaller project will move from there unless unless another project ready to like invent and ready to take over bought it mm -hmm. yeah but new project that new project maybe will be will be difficult uh, cause cause we cause I think people already see like similar stuff duplicate over and over people will be more careful when they're buying stuff yeah, yeah I think yeah now that the, the the marketplace is so saturated with so many new projects people are starting to learn to well I guess you have both right there are more people coming into the into the nft space that have absolutely no idea what they're doing um but then those who already are in the nft space are um i guess being a bit more picky with with the projects yeah yeah um let's see there's another question that someone had asked what are your top projects less than one ETH at the moment what what does that mean what what are your top projects? What mm. projects do you think are good to buy into now that are under one ETH? Uh, I don't dare to give you give but you like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, <laughs> actually, right now I I didn't hold any valuable project. I actually recently just sell my bought it on like few weeks ago. So, yeah. I don't really know any project worth buying or not. Maybe I will know when when there's one coming. I didn't real I didn't like really really go and search for it. I wait until it come comes to me. Whenever like whenever when I say that right, whenever a project comes to you right from from your friends, uh, from your friends or from from. Uh. Like if it comes from your friend, means it go through like different of level already, like different of war, means you can, you can like really look look into it. Like if I see on social media, usually I won't, I won't really go and look for it. Like. I mean, you just have to hope your friend is not a DJ that literally yeah. just found a project on Twitter and was like, hey, hey, Axel, we should mint this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do any research? No. <laughs> They they will help me to verify the project. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they're hoping that you will verify it for them. Yeah. Then then I will go through my go through the the way how I verify the project. It's true, but like, uh, I'm just gonna pick one project out because we were all we were all kind of there during the time of the pump. Yeah. What are you like? What? So for example, projects like Oni Force right only force actually actually at the very first place i i really predict they will they will uh they will they will crash crash like very hard but the only mistake i made is i because of my ego right i didn't i didn't really really buy into the project uh, you didn't work? yeah i didn't buy because because i talked to one of the founder at that time uh i i that time they are like they are the first project that introduced like uh like grind grind for whitelist i i would say that so i tell tell the founder like this way this way of grinding whitelist is like is very fake uh. then the 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 founder say something say something like uh like we we didn't ask you to grind some something like that then i like a oh, fuck it i i just skip this project so yeah so i i predict that uh the founder attitude is not very good then in long run will will not be will not be very good uh, good for the project it was a good that anyone flipped it though but too bad too bad i didn't buy it so a bit regret there yeah i i regret selling it at three ETH, but profit then it's profit. 
<laughs> but no, 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 no. Listen to this. I sold it at three ETH. It pumped to seven, literally, like an hour after I sold it. It pumped from three ETH to seven Ethereum. And then I had a bit of FOMO. I was like, oh, shit, it's pumping. So then when it dropped back down to three, I bought in again at three. And then it just kept going down after that. And I was like, well, I could have made my three profit, but ugh. I still hold my two my two only. So yeah, I haven't sold them yet. I mean, that's that's like mm. ugh, lesson learned. I'm so many of those projects where I look at my wallet and I'm like, yeah, emotional attachment. I gotta yeah. get rid of that <laughs> for something <laughs> like Lives of Asuna as well. I'm still holding that one. It pains me to see it every day, but it's a reminder that Kumo, you should just sell during the peak or the hype. Yeah, yeah only in NFT space you will have a regret. Like no matter you earn or or you lose, yeah. always got regret. I think I think like the NFT space space like either mentally makes you stronger or mentally destroys you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you you guys choose what you want to do. Um, um, there is sorry. There's also Here's another question. Are you familiar with ro- nodes? Seems like I've been hearing more node projects coming up now. I'm not really sure what that. Yeah, is. not really sure either. Maybe because I been stopped trading for a while, so didn't really follow. Ah, also, there's a question as well saying why did you stop trading for a while? Yeah, like I said earlier, uh. I've been building my project, so but this one I I won't share it on this section because it's not related. <laughs> I'll bring you in next time for that. Sure, sure. <laughs> uh, based on your research chart, there are a couple of criteria, so hype, standard, etc. Is there a different weightage that you put into each? Like which ones that you would emphasize more? Uh, do that chart on that chart. I wouldn't say you need to put emphasize on different thing, cause that chart is uh based on my criteria. Like different people will have different criteria. So as long as long it met most of the point, I'm I'm comfortable to hold it and buy it. As long as I'm comfortable to hold, then when it did, I will be I will be, I will also be comfortable. Something like that. So, but you can you can always adjust the chart. So depends on your criteria, what you're looking for in a project. It will change over time, uh. So it it wouldn't always be be what I what I show you just now. Yeah, like like what Hyde said. Right now the criteria is cute. So it really it really situational. Like different different seller looking for uh looking for different market. Yeah. Cool. Um, SK, I will. I mean, wait, we need whitelist take snapshot. What do you mean? Yeah, he was talking about his own project, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, he is. Um, but we will, we will, we'll bring him in for another AMA about that. Um, we'll talk, we'll talk about his project soon. Um, right, Axel? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what, what do you mean by exposure over reality? For me, uh, what I made, I made a big mistake is I focus more on reality. Uh, how I say, you, usually, usually on a PFP project, they got like three, three section. Like a uh, super rare, super rare, super rare, uh, PFP, like, like a floor one, and a and a middle range one. So, usually the the middle range one will be, will will be very hard to price, for for reseller will be very hard to price and, like you don't know you don't know you want to price on the floor or on the ceiling. And usually middle one is less buyer, so and floor one floor one will be will be more easy to sell. 
and for the for the rare one right for the rare one you need connection to sell it so so what what i'm speaking here is through my experience on board it uh. so not sure about on other project so i last time i used to hold like three board it and i trade for one for one rare one and and right now three three floor board it is like 300 ETH and a middle range one is like around 150 ETH. So, so you see the difference that uh, when, when a project go through pump, the floor one will pump higher than the mid, mid range one. So if you buy floor one will be, will, will be safer, uh, will, will be, will, will be more profitable also. And you you wouldn't you wouldn't lose a lot of money, uh, buying on on the super rare stuff. And always you and you got more exposure on that project also something like that. Hope oh, that answer your question. What do you mean by more exposure on the project? Uh, like, like you spend little money to get like, to get the benefit of the project. Like for board eight, right? Uh, actually, super rare, medium rare, and floor floor one, they actually all have the same benefit. So, so as long you got the got the floor one, the cheapest one, you get the you get the free airdrop. So you no need to like, no need to like hunt for like, no need to like flip upward to like flip to more rare stuff. Ah, okay. And so then why do you think people like to buy the rare ones then? I see a lot of projects when they first release or reveal, people are always like hunting for the rare rare pieces with every you, project. You can hunt for a rare piece during the mean mean uh during the mean time. But after that, after the where where after the project established, it's best to look for the flaw one. Something like that. Uh, is actually I guess it's also like you know when you're when you're selling as well is if you're if you're buying like a rare piece and then the floor starts to dump it's easier to sell the floor price as opposed to if you had bought a rare yeah yeah you you can you can put it that way also yeah, because I remember when I was doing flipping with uh with TJ, for yeah. when we, when, we, when Cool Cast was under one E, it was like TJ was like, "Come on, just buy the floors. Don't buy the other ones because well, it wasn't a floor. It was like the the green background ones. It was like second from the 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 rare, the second from the common ones." Yeah. Um, and I was like, because he goes, "Oh yeah, because people like to have some sort of rarity, but not like." Uh, you know the rare rare ones so you can find some good offers on the floor or good yeah. kind of rarities to floor and then you flip them and then you you buy another floor because there's always going to be paper hands right so you sell at a higher and then when you see like a little dip especially if it's during the pump because people will paper hand during the pump people just do that and then yeah. so you just buy the the ones that people paper hand um and then you sell at a higher price that's kind of how how those yeah. like uh, day trading nft people it was so tiring <laughs> i did it for like i think two so i was it like an, a day i did it for one or two days and i was like yeah. tj i don't know how you do it i'm so tired <laughs> just having to constantly you know keep up to date with like whether it's pumping or when it's dumping because um i think there was a stage where cool cats had pumped to like 1.8 and then it started dumping like dumping dumping back to like you know 0.9 or 0.8 and tj was like don't buy yet just don't buy yet like you know because obviously it's still dumping um i think it's like when do you think like when a project pumps a lot in one day that that will result in a huge dump yeah i think most it's like a trend like that i think most project has that similar trend wherever they pump like too high it will it will go back down Penta Bear is one of the example. I like pump to pump to nine if then it drop back to like two if something like that. So it's like a trend. I think I think almost everyone can predict this one. This trend already. Like whenever you pump too high, then 
it will definitely dip back. Like how you said that, you know, like if you want to be part of the project, then sell at the high and then just buy a floor. Like if you, especially if you got like a rare one or whatever, yeah. um, then sell it during the pump and then just buy. Because once it pumps, like what, what, like what comes up kind of has to go down, right? There will be up and downs in, in all projects. So, um, by the way, these are just kind of from observation. This is not saying this is what you guys have to do. It's just, I'm just kind of telling, saying like my experience in, in this trading thing as well i don't i don't trade but i mean like during the selling and buying <laughs> um so uh yeah so then um like sell if you if you get like a really rare one and you, unless you really like it right you don't have to sell it but if you're like you said in it for the money um but like the project then just you know sell at the pump and then buy a, like a floor one because like you said the utility is all the same anyways as long as you own an nft yeah yeah but if you get a rare one just have it just get the money then decide later <laughs> yeah i fail at that <laughs> i fail at every single one of them i have a rare for um for invisible friends and i have a rare for karafuru but i didn't sell any of them i'm still holding <laughs> i will never i'm surprised now um the floor for I think the highest offer I got for the 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 Karafuru, uh, the legendary one. So I think I, the the highest offer I got was like thirty ETH, but I just held on to like, oh no, it's gonna be worth more, you know, whatever. Nice. And then uh, I'm still holding it. I'm like, okay, I feel like there's more that can come from it. Um, and then with Invisible Friends, I don't know. I think it's just really cool the one that I got. But it is like, and I think it's like in the hundreds, um, the the rarity. Um, the floor is actually not as high as it was pre-reveal. Mm. I think pre-reveal was at like eleven ETH, but now the floor is at around six, six point nine, seven point something. So yeah, <laughs> hey, was like Kuma rejects a thirty ETH offer. I didn't reject it. I just didn't accept it. <laughs> <laughs> Sad on my part, but yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, back to what you what you really looking for. Maybe if yeah. you look for money, then you can sell it. If you if you don't really need need uh need it, then you can just hold it. Uh. Maybe it means something to you. I mean, I I like to make money from it, but I don't know. I feel like pre reveal. There's that mindset of what if I get a rare, right? There's always that mindset of what if I get a rare. But then post reveal, depending on the project, most of them are like, I'm like, oh, but it's so cute. Because <laughs> <laughs> you see it there, right? Yeah. It's yeah. all about psychology. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's like ultimately, it's the psychology of humans. Who more uh, a gambler? <laughs> I'm a I'm I'm not even a good gambler. I'm a hodler. I wouldn't even say I gamble. If I gamble, I would have sold more, much more, um, even at a loss. But yeah, I just I just hodl everything. It it pains me, but yeah, <laughs> emotional attachment. Yeah. yeah, I feel like like how would you how would you kind of overcome this emotional attachment part? I mean, you've I think, traded a lot of BAYCs, right? So, like, yeah. surely some of them that you were like, oh, I really like this one. I think I saw one that you bought, like, last year. And I was like, this is a really cool one. Um, but then you obviously traded it for another one, right? Yeah, yeah. I think I think you just have to get used to it. I was recently, recently for the uh, Ape airdrop, right? Ape airdrop, like, 130k. Actually, I missed out. Miss out that airdrop totally because I sell it earlier, one week earlier. So just have to deal with it. <laughs> can't really, no point to regret. Uh. It is what it is. <laughs> you yeah. can't change back time. Yeah. Because it's, uh, it's still a life changing money. Uh. Just yeah. have to be grateful. Uh. Exactly. Like, like we said earlier, profit is profit. Yeah. And how come you, like, do you think you'll keep? HY, I can hear the pain in his voice. <laughs> <laughs>
It's okay. We got you. We got you. <laughs> 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 Everyone is sending you their love. <laughs> you got this, Axel. Um, do you think you'll be trading Bay, uh, the apes again, or do you think it's just like a one shot? Like now, it's now that you're you're just kind of finished trading um, apes. Uh, I I would buy back because I believe in the project, but yeah, but I will still wait. I wait until it dips to a decent decent price. Cause my previous eight right, I think I sold for like, I think sold for hundred fifty if, so just wait uh, just wait until, until the price I comfort comfortable with. And like, what do you think is a good price for the if if it was to dip the previous dip is uh 72 if so that's where i estimate that's the support uh, the ape support so mm. it will it will dip until then then you will pump back so if we if you comfort with 80 if then you can then you can buy during buy around that range of I remember looking at yeah. the. Remember when there, there was a period where all projects were dipping, um, like Cool Cats was I think at fifteen ETH, and then it went all the way back to like or went all the way down to six ETH, and I think um same with the Apes, they were at like eighty something, and they dipped to like forty, forty four, forty five. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was looking at Apes then, and I was like, oh, I mean, not easy, not lot. easy. <laughs> yeah, like it's 40 not easy. ETH. Oh, I, I like, <laughs> and you're also trying to find one that you like as well, right? Yeah, yeah. It's or not easy to them. buy fear and buy fear and sell hype. I know, right? Yeah. Because I was like, well, I I knew it wasn't going to to go down that much, but it was more like, do you think it will go up much more? Like, cool, cool cats haven't been back to fifteen ETH since mm. the drop. But obviously, um, like Azuki has gone back up, and apes have gone back up. Um, yeah. yeah, there's always that kind of, and then the 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 mutant apes also pumped as well. So yeah. yeah, it's really really hard, especially when like if you were to convert it to fiat, you're like, oh, so yeah. you could buy a house with this. <laughs> Imagine or, telling your parents. Yeah. <laughs> For cool cats, they I think they mess up the the cool cool pets. Cool pet system, mm. so yeah, so people are people are uh, expect they expect more and then the more the the more they expect the more disappointed they they get. Uh. Yeah, I yeah. think there was just so much hype built over it, and then the hype just kind of gradually died because of you know like we always say timing is so important in this space, right? So if like another project that um that I really liked as well. It was like Bunkles. They had so much hype built around their project, and then mm. because it was it was being postponed so much. Like even my friend who was who wanted to buy, um, they posted they postponed it so much that he actually forgot to buy because he was like, oh, I I didn't realize that they already sold because. <laughs> because they had like he was like you know setting setting time people set time for things right okay i yeah, set yeah. a time for this. oh okay it's postponed then i have to like you know change my plans oh i set a time for this oh postponed so i think it's like um so yeah so it's just that i think timing is like even like yeah, when yeah. a project is really good timing is really important and also mm. like um like if you want to ride on the hype you should ride on the hype like hype doesn't wait around for you nor does it last for the foreseeable future depending on the project you know yeah oh my gosh sarita was saying i heard people got rapid loans to buy apes to get the coins yeah i think especially on us i think people a lot of people take loan even some of my friend right they sell their they sell their Mercedes to just buy an egg. <laughs> really? So a lot, yeah. It's almost like someone was saying that, you know, these, these, like, I obviously don't know the utilities of Board Ape Yacht Club or, or any other, those, like, blue chip projects because I'm not in them. But people was, were saying that they're almost like a, like a, what would you call that? Like a, 
like a showing off of your wealth through a PFP? Like a symbol of status, you mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like a status kind of thing where if you if you own a, an a, an ape aboard a yacht club, yes, the digital flex. That's what it is. Um, because it's like, oh well, it's so expensive that you must have a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. Actually, but, for me, um, right, when I start buying bought it, I I see it as a as a as a things for me to like flex. Cause for me, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like buy a Rolex, I wouldn't like buy a fancy car. So buying a profile pic, it makes sense. Uh. You just, I just feel, just feel right to to like flexing with a with a profile pic. So that's that's how I got like, that's how I believe in like this entire, entire concept. But, but after you're trading for a while, you seeing the similar patterns. Then you will you will start to rethink 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 everything. Yeah, um, I agree with you on that. Uh, I don't buy items like I know my friend buys like handbags, like Gucci handbags or or Versace handbags or whatever other brands there are out there. I really don't know anything about brands, but yeah, or like buying cars, and they're like, but why would you buy a JPEG? Like I was like, but dude. It doesn't like take up any space in my house. Like if I'm a, a, a like a handbag collector, if I'm a car collector, I need physical space for that. Um, where a JPEG can kind of just be like you know in the virtual space, and I can kind of keep my. Well, I try yeah, to yeah, keep yeah. it tidy, but it's still messy. Even though, <laughs> yeah. even though I don't buy things anymore. Um, you you don't have to take care of the JPEG like for car. Yeah. You need to like send to car wash. You need to like polish it. Yeah. yeah management is, is much easier with the jpeg right, right, right. Uh, wixie asked you what do you look in the project roadmap when you're doing your research uh th this one actually is depending on the current trend like what 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 you are looking for if if 10 people are looking for the same thing then that's what as a trader you should be looking for so it's not what i what i looking for i need to i i'm not buying the jpeg for myself I buying to resell, so I need to, I need to see what people are looking for. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it like it it depends on it's it's a personal thing, I guess. Like it, what what each person is looking for in a project, right? Yeah, yeah. Um. If, if most people are looking for companion like companion airdrop, then then you need to look for a project with a companion airdrop in roadmap. Uh? yeah yeah it's like uh you need to think of yourself like a like a businessman like you 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 must buy a project that people want else else uh else your jpeg will keep in the storage uh, like no one no one even want yep 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 i guess that's why like it's good to see that a project has like long-term vision as opposed to like no vision yeah because i think like like sometimes i feel like some projects they would like i'm not footing any projects by the way mm. it's just more so like um like they would add things or or do things in like say for example when a project uh they their roadmap is quite plain or there's there's not much of a roadmap and then it's almost like, oh, okay, so our project is, we don't really have anything to give to our our, our holders or something. Let's make a new collection. Okay, now that new collection is done. Okay, let's do another collection. Oh, let's do another collection. So it's like constant of just um, trying Constantly to- milking up. Uh. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Actually, I know a few projects that did that, but uh, but I won't I wouldn't say the name out. It's like, <laughs> it's like a trend. Uh like a trend like if you sell like let's take kumower for example like if you sell out then you can you can build a next project uh that give give your current holder a, a extra white list white list for that new project so if 
if you do this during a during a bear market, right? Eh, during a bull market, right? It will benefit your 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 holder. Lah. If you do this during on bear market, then actually you are the one that that gain more gain more money from it. So is is very situational as a project owner whether you want to do this or not. Yeah, exactly. Because like I think like you said, timing, like like we always said, timing is important, right? So if you're doing a new collection, um and but the thing is I feel like if you were to constantly do new collections, right? Mm -hmm. And the that new collection flops, that almost is like brings down the value of your initial collection. Yeah, yeah, that's right. If it, it will ruin your reputation also. So it's like it's like double edged sauce. Yeah. So I guess it's just like that's why I think like there's certain projects that would kind of have one collection and then while they're still hyping, like still in that kind of hype bubble, they're like, oh we're gonna do another collection, da 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 kind of like keep writing on it. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah like there's yeah I mean there is a lot of projects that just are constantly just dropping new collections and sometimes I'm like but I mean the first like yeah you you haven't like, even complete your roadmap yeah <laughs> and you have to release the next one <laughs> yeah it's like a, well where does like you know it's it's kind of sometimes these collections just kind of come out of nowhere you know yeah um so yeah like it just you just have to be careful with that because um yeah yeah, just... but but also the buyers need to be beware also, cause if the buyer didn't didn't like like didn't say like oh this one do another one we don't buy, but people keep buying it, because people keep buying it, they they keep produce, so yeah yeah demand and supply uh, something like that. yeah that's why like if if you want to, it to be like a point for growing the project. Bear, like don't do it during the bear market. Yes. <laughs> it's so hard to sell out during the bear market. So I would be like, oh yeah, I'm literally just going to launch. Especially if they're like a high, a high mint price or a high, like a total supply. Like there's a lot of 10k projects dropping now that I'm like, oh, don't. Like, are you sure now is a good time to drop a 10k project? Um. So yeah, timing. Actually, timing. if they if they if they produce 10 different projects, right? And each yeah. of the project they sold for like two k, two k. They still they still able to to make that money, you know. That is yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. That so that is true. They I tell you they they like this project project uh owner right. They will continue to milk the community. They will keep milk until until the bubble burst. If if there is any bubble. So yeah. no no yeah. So yeah. as a as a buyer as a reseller, you need to you need to like really be careful when you pick your project, cause right now I think eighty percent, eighty percent, seventy percent of the project are, I think mostly are cash grab, so you just need to be careful yeah and do your own research on this part. But don't you think though, like if they're dropping a lot of collections, that's part of a utility for their holders depends <laughs> if if they say that is the power of utt then i have nothing to say uh, because they already <laughs> mentioned it on the first place <laughs> that is true if that's something yeah. that you want to do then then go for it i guess uh, yeah right um uh, i'm going to say oh i am just conscious of your time because uh we already we're already over one hour but glt has a question we'll take this as the last one um okay um, because you know, actually, you're awesome, and your time is also very precious. Um, right. She or she says, when you initially jump into an NFT, do you usually get one? Because I've seen advices somewhere where people say three is a sweet spot: one to de-risk, one to profit, and one to huddle. Uh, I get. For me, I get two. I get like like two piece, one for one for resale and want to hold for later but but i I don't think that's right or wrong you you can get three you can get four or more but 
but for me my comfort is to uh, I get like twin twin pair. But when I when I start trading, I always I always buy one. I only realize this this like buy two or three, uh like on middle middle stage. Yeah. Like, do, would you, if you buy two, would you not like normally sell one, pre reveal and then keep one for reveal? Uh, it depends on if usually I buy on, post review. If post review, I will uh, I will sell during during like, the first pump I sell one, then the other one I hold for second pump, but but if you believe in the project, then you can you can rebuy back always. You can rebuy back the dips. But okay. but but not really easy to to buy to buy fear and sell hype. It's not easy. Even yeah. right now, right now the only project I comfort with doing it is bought air. The other mm -hmm. project usually when I sell, I just, I just fuck it, ignore ignore it already. Wouldn't, <laughs> Be gone. wouldn't really yeah, wouldn't really uh it, care about the project. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's a yeah. <laughs> I'm like I wish I could do the same, but yeah, the amount of times where I've I've sold during the pump, but also bought back in during the pump. <laughs> Because of the FOMO. <laughs> but yeah, I always get two, two to three around there. Yeah. Because if you if you get one, once you sell, then that's it. You you don't have anything else. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So you don't have that. At least you kind of mitigate that kind of FOMO ish feeling, you know, or oh, at least I still have one. GLT is like when you sell pre-reveal, never look back to check yes, your yes. sold rarity. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Once it's sold, you just let it go. Don't yeah. think about it anymore. Yeah. It'll just cause you pain, if anything. If if yeah. you did get a rare one. It happened, it happened. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like there I think there was like I just there was one time where um I think I was just really lucky that I saw that I meant it two and I sold one. And one of them, the one that I sold was a common one, and the one that I kept was a rare one. But like, imagine if I had done it the other way around. I'm like, oh, the pain. Yeah. It is. That's, what it that's is. why. That's why when you when you when you can afford to take risk, right? Uh, best best to take the risk. Like, if the project is potential, then just take a risk. Yeah. Yeah. It. I mean, this whole NFT space is all about risk playing, right? Yeah, yeah, but you can depends uh, depends on your threshold, like how much risk you you want to take. So there's different level of threshold. Yeah, if you're gonna play big, it may as well, or if you're gonna play, you may as well play big. Yeah. Not financial Ooh. advice. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Don't listen to Kumo. She's not a good flipper. Listen yeah. to Axel. He's the one who's actually all the experience. Go big or go home. Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> TJ Flu's advice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that time he bought the the Super Shivas or another another project where he minted like oh I don't know like twenty or thirty of them. I'm like oh my god. Yeah, yeah. He, Super. He's really like aggressive trader. Yeah, like where they just mint a lot and hope that that they'll flip and they'll kind of give them all that all that profit. Mm. Good, which is good. Um. Okay, so. Right, guys, I'm going to start wrapping it up because it has been an hour and a half and we have already taken the last uh, question. So please, everyone, tag Axel in the residence chat and thank him. Send him your love because we really appreciate all the advice and tips that he gave us. Not a financial advice, just more so general advice for people that are looking to trade um and where to start um in in finding projects i guess so thank you so much axel and i uh, really appreciate you coming here and talking with us because i know how nervous you were at the start but you were perfect you were amazing thanks, no need thanks. to worry so much uh, confidence <laughs> actually i got a last advice like if you are new in the space just join any community like to observe observe what other people are saying that's how I 
wherever my friend want to join, I, I will just tell them to like, you join, join other top community like Doodles, Bot8, Cool Cat. You just see what they're talking, just observe their lingo. Then, then you will, you will get the idea. You'll get the idea how, how to play the game. Yeah, that's it. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, yep, I agree with Axel on that. It's like, if you're new to the space, don't just deep dive and start spending lots of ETH on projects because observation is really key. You know, if you're not sure, then observe. There will always be opportunities. So learn from observation. And then when you feel somewhat confident, I wouldn't say somewhat confident, but confident enough that, you know, you can kind of figure out or filter projects, then then start start kind of small. Don't don't go all, all crazy in and, and spend all your years savings on a project. Like Axel said earlier, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Um but yes, observation is key and and just kind of uh learning learning from those who are already experienced in this space. So Axel, uh, once again, thank you so much for being here and we love you. Thanks and for having we'll... me. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> and we will have you back for uh, for your project that we can talk about next time too. No, don't be nervous. You were great. You're awesome. All Thanks, right, guys. Man. Well, that, that wraps up our very first workshop. Uh, Axel actually opened up our workshop Wednesday, so whoop, 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 clap, clap, yay. Um, let's go. Yeah, let's go. Let's, let's take down this NFT space and let's all, let's all make money. <laughs> <laughs> this is not what Kumo's World is about, by the way. I joke, I joke. I, I swear I'm joking, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, I will chat you all in the residence chat or whatever, wherever we will be. Um, but yes, I wish you all a wonderful day and I will chat you guys soon. Thank you again for tuning in and take care. Bye. Thanks.